Hello everyone, welcome to Legacy Ace Academy. As you can see, today it's the 25 years to the historic Pokhran 2 nuclear tests. So in the year 1998, India conducted a nuclear test, test in the name of Operation Shakti and there were five nuclear bombs that were tested on the 11th of May and also on the 13th of May. So in this video, we will be talking about what, what is this Pokhran 2 all about? If this is Pokhran 2, what is considered as Pokhran 1, which is also nicknamed as Operation Smiling Buddha? And what is the evolution of India's nuclear doctrine and how India became a nuclear state? So what is the context? As I've told you that today, May 11th, that we're talking about is the 25th year, that is Silver Jubilee for the India's nuclear armament program. That is Pokhran 2 test that happened in the state of Rajasthan. As we can see here, on this particular day, in the year 1998, in the year 1998, 75 scientists who were tasked in order to manufacture or test nuclear technology in India gave a phone call to the Prime Minister's office and conveyed the keyword that the White House has collapsed. See, this is the keyword. This is the code word so that the Indian scientists and also the Indian government would get the rescue from the spy or the CIA agents who were operating in India. So as soon as the call was made and the code word, the White House has collapsed, was conveyed to the Prime Minister's office, the Prime Minister came in front of the entire country and declared that, announced that the India had conducted three nuclear tests at Pokhran range. On May 13th, the another two tests were conducted and finally, India is now a nuclear weapon state. This was officially declared by the Prime Minister of India, that was Atal Bihari Vajpayee in the year 1998. And India, India announced itself to be the nuclear state in the year 1998. And this day of 11th May 1998, 11th May every year is celebrated as National Technology Day. Okay, so this is the history, this is the context in which we will be talking about this video. You can see here why India conducted nuclear tests in the year 1990s, in the late 1990s. What are the events that happened that prompted India to come up with the nuclear test in the year 1998? As I've told you already, this is the Pokhran 2 test that happened in the year 1998 which means there was one more test called Pokhran 1 that happened in the year 1974. Okay, so in the year 1974, when the Prime Minister of India was Indira Gandhiji, there was one more nuclear, the, the first nuclear test that happened, that was Operation Smiling Buddha, which is also called as Pokhran. See, if you just trace the evolution of the post-independent India's diplomacy and also the foreign policy, We'll get to know about some insights. What, what happened in the year 1974 and what prompted India to conduct one more nuclear test in the year 1998. 1950, 1947, the annexation of the Kashmir led to the India-Pakistan war for the first time. Following then, from 1951 to 1964, Nehru was very confident about India being a very much friendly nation with China except the 1962 war. So in the year 1962, because the then Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru was very much ambitious about the India and the Chinese relationship, he, was, he did not even anticipate the war because of which India faced a humiliating defeat in 1962 war. Okay, and the, it was a humiliating defeat because the China announced a unilateral ceasefire in the year 1962. And this led to the first no confidence motion against Jawaharlal Nehru in the year 1963. And the following in the year 1964, Jawaharlal Nehru died. Okay, so these are the chain of events, which means the neighbor that India considered as the most important, and the most friendly that was China turned hostile in the year 1962. Three years later, Three years later, when the political situation of India was very much fragile because of the death of our first Prime Minister, Pakistan attacked India in the year 1965. Okay, when Lal Bahadur Shastri was the Prime Minister, Pakistan attacked India for the second time after 1947 in the year 1965. Though India was able to win the war, we were not able to translate the defeats on the ground to the uh, victory on the table. 
Though India won the war on the ground, India lost it on the diplomatic tables, and this led to the signing of Tashkent Agreement in the present day Uzbekistan. And the just the next day of signing the agreement, Lal Bahadur Shastri died. We all know this. This is the history. And after this, six years later, 1971, India faced Pakistan again. Okay, in this war of liberation of Bangladesh, where India was fighting against Pakistan, and Pakistan had made a very good allies with China and also USA, there came a very devastating incident where China, where USA and Britain were in support of Pakistan, and Russia dispatched its convoy. Russia, Russia dispatched its submarines and the aircraft carrier to the Indian Ocean in the support of. the motherland that is india so this was an incident that prompted the then prime minister indira gandhi in order to commission the first nuclear test that happened in the year 1974 the the present the, the government then was thinking about the security and the safety of the country had to be dependent on the power blocks because see imagine this was the time of the cold war that was happening between 1951 1950s to 1991 so in this phase of the cold war where the security of india would have been compromised because of the dispute between the two power blocks that is usa and ussr this event prompted india to think about the being nuclear state in the year 1964 Okay, so sorry, in the year nineteen seventy four. So in the year nineteen seventy four, the Operation Smiling Buddha that was conducted, Operation Smiling Buddha that was conducted, it was only for the peaceful purpose, which means for the production of electricity and in order to use the technology in the mining sector. But this did not even talk about the weapon grade uranium enrichment. So which means the Operation Smiling Buddha, as it was named as Smiling Buddha. this did not talk about weapon grade enrichment of the uranium that is the reason why we have in the year 1998 pokhran 2 which is also named as operation shakti so what is pokhran 1 we've talked about this in the year 1974 we had the pokhran 1 that is operation smiling buddha see look at the uh, thread of events that happened after 1974 okay 1975 we have the emergency where we have the technology we have proved to the entire world that the india has technology in the year 1974 one year later in the year 1975 to 1977 we have the dark ages in the history of indian democracy that is emergency 1977 the election happens and the indira gandhi doesn't come back to power we have the janata government in power and in the year 1980 indira indira gandhi comes back to power again and from 1980 to 1984 is a area is is a time period of very much political instability both in the northeast that is the assam crisis and also we have the punjab crisis that happened which led to the death of indira gandhi in the year 1984 so following this following this in the 1990s in the 1990s china had become hostile pakistan had become hostile and with these two front war that india had to face potentially in the near future the usa was pressurizing india to sign non proliferation treaty and also comprehensive test ban treaty okay non proliferation treaty which should be signed by all the non nuclear states so that these non nuclear states will not become nuclear states going future okay in the coming future these non nuclear states will not acquire the nuclear technology whatsoever by the means it is it will not acquire the nuclear technology so that was non proliferation treaty that united states wanted very badly that india should sign non proliferation treaty so with these with these global geopolitical pressures and also india having two of its neighbors turning hostile against itself india decided in the year 1998 that it would go ahead and test the pokhran 2 and india would announce it to the world that now india is a nuclear weapon state so now how did india manage to escape the radar see what happened in the year 1995 when narasimha rao was the prime minister narasimha rao declared he gave a green signal for the test of nuclear weapons but this was detected by the us government and us government gave a phone call and this test was ended again in the year 1996 the same narasimha rao gave a green signal again and there was a phone call from the cia and the cia was very keen in observing the india's nuclear doctrine and cia detected it and this test was abandoned and in the year 1998 finally when atal bihari vajpayee became the prime minister 
there was a huge strategy that went into the conduction of the nuclear test in the year 1998 starting from the very very remote location that is in the pokhran range in the present day rajasthan which is a desert so in this pokhran range in this pokhran range before the conduction of the actual nuclear test the indian government made sure that there is a huge movement of military and there are also some military exercises being conducted from the last one year so that if at all the us satellites finds out that there is any army movement or a truck movement is happening the satellite would take the image and the us officials would conclude this uh, this to be one more military exercise that the indian government or the indian army is actually conducting and nothing suspicious about it so this was a remote location and uh, there was a diplomatic engagement that happened where india was talking about nuclear disarmament from 1990s onwards from 1990s when india is talking about nuclear disarmament nobody in the world would have predicted that india would go ahead and test the nuclear weapon in the year 1998 the military exercises as i've told you already there was numerous number of military exercises that happened in the pokhran that is the desert of the rajasthan from 1996 and 1997 onwards so the uh, this this was this actually was done in order to bypass the intelligence of the united states and to be very very cautious the indian scientists actually had got the location points of the us satellite and all they used to do was move the entire weapon and also the whatever the equipment that were required only at night and there are also images where the scientists have been dressed like the army men okay they are wearing the army uniform so that even if the satellite image gets get captures them then the us officials would think that these people are the indian army and there is no scientific or there is no nuclear activity happening in the prokran range so after the announcement of the success of the nuclear test in the year 1998 how did the world react to it as it was expected as it was expected the entire west especially usa banned india and put a lot of sanctions on india on 13th may washington imposed sanctions against the new delhi under the glen amendment so washington came out with the sanctions though these sanctions did not last long and from 1998 if you just consider the present day that is 2023 the relationship between india and the us is continuously increasing okay and there was also news yesterday that 22nd june 22nd june the american president would be hosting the indian prime minister on behalf of the national or the international yoga day that would be celebrated on 21st june okay so 22nd june we have the indian prime minister narendra modi ji visiting the united states of america which means from 1998 in the last 25 years till 2023 the relationship between india and the america is continuously increasing Pakistan conducted a series of nuclear tests by the end of May 28th and the 30th May is when even Pakistan conducted its nuclear weapon and this proved it to the entire world that why did India conduct nuclear weapons because India wanted Pakistan to declare itself as a nuclear state because the tensions between India and the Pakistan was growing and Pakistan had become a very close ally of China and this resulted this this would have resulted in a war and india wanted the entire world to know that the india pakistan war is not just a war because this is a war between the nuclear powered states so in the next 20 days okay 2 to 1 and a half to 3 weeks pakistan also conducted a nuclear test and pakistan announced that even pakistan is a nuclear test nuclear state as of now china as usual china condemned the outrageous attempt for the common will of the international community even china condemned these nuclear tests that were conducted and the domestically the domestic politics and the, all the parties the uh, the political parties the opponents of that particular day 1998 condemned or criticized these tests and they criticized because there was also american sanctions that were put on place So after this the prime minister announced something called as no first use policy which means as india is a peace loving country we will not be using nuclear weapon for the first time if at all there's a war that bro- breaks out between india and pakistan india will never use the nuclear weapon by itself 
okay if pakistan uses nuclear weapon against india then we would use it against pakistan so that is called as no first use policy so uh, prime minister announced voluntary moratorium on the test of the nuclear weapons in the year 1998 which is still being followed after 1998 we have not conducted any such nuclear tests in india okay this is the voluntary moratorium on the nuclear test is still being followed so these are the some of the events that led to the india becoming the nuclear state in the year 1998 because of which india is able to create some deterrence and india is able to potentially manage its two of its hostile neighbors including china and pakistan because of the efforts of people like jawahar lal nehru lal bahadur shastri homi jahangir baba dhorab ji tata and uh, atal bihari vajpayee narsimha rao and can't forget APJ Abdul Kalam India is able to protect its unity and sovereignty till the present day so if you have liked the video please hit the like button for more such enriching content subscribe to legacy academy have a nice day thank you